Hello and welcome once again to the Fisherman's Post Saltwater Podcast Series. My name is Gary Hurley of Fisherman's Post, and Fisherman's Post has been serving the North Carolina saltwater fishing community since 2003. We've been bringing you fishing reports, fishing information, fishing schools, fishing tournaments, and now in this new latest and greatest chapter, the Fisherman's Post Saltwater Podcast Series. And in the podcast series, we talk to our friends, our captains and guides um, from up and down the North Carolina coast, and we ask them to share with us, with our viewers, their insights on how to catch more fish more often. And so I think behind that whole idea of more fish more often is just the idea of getting you to spend more time on the water with more friends and more family. And I think that is perhaps even the greater purpose than more fish. Um, This particular episode, we're going to be talking about citation, red drum, surf fishing, citation, red drum, surf fishing in the fall, and we have a great guest this time. We have Brian Lester of Hatteras Style Custom Rods and Tackle. He based right there in Buxton, right in the epicenter of surf fishing on the East Coast, and we're going to hear from him. He's going to talk to us about the when and the where. He's going to talk to us about rigs and bait. And we're going to see where this conversation goes, because I know a lot of people, it's on their list to try to pull in a big red drum from the surf, but I think especially from the Buxton surf. Um, I'm joined, as I am every week, with my co-host, Billy Thorpe, and that's Billy Thorpe of Thorpe Creative. Billy, how you doing? I'm doing good, Gary. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm excited for this yeah, episode, man. I have, a soft spot in my, I have a soft spot in my heart for surf fishing. You know, grew up Ocean City, Assateague, and surf fish more than anything else. Yeah. And when I say that it's on people's bucket list to catch a citation red drum for the point, what I'm really saying is... It's on your bucket list. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> well, this is your training session right here. I hope. I, I have a feeling that after this conversation with Brian, I'm going to make a date. Now we're, that we're both going to get in the car and just be like, all right, here we go. Well, maybe not right now, but when it, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get on on uh brian's call list and he's gonna call us up and tell us man it's hot you gotta, it's you gotta get out here yeah man that'll be exciting 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 well and i will go ahead and let everybody know how to watch how to listen um but not before i mentioned marine warehouse center thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show making it possible for everyone to learn these tactics and here's a little commercial from them and we'll be right back this is Preston with Marine Warehouse Center. We're your headquarters for Carolina Skiff, Sea Chaser, Prepare Marine, and Sailfish Boat. If you're looking for tons of features and value without compromise, come check out our inventory in person or check us out online. Always a good commercial, man. I think you saw a boat in there you liked you were talking about earlier. That tower boat <laughs> caught my eye. <laughs> You know, uh, I have a knows. soft spot in my heart for sea chaser boats. You put a tower on it, yeah. you definitely got my attention. Oh, well, let's see, Marine Warehouse. You guys want to sponsor for the next, I don't know, 50 years? Let's go. <laughs> Throw the boat down? <laughs> we're still working on hats. I know, right? From our if, last episode, I think we're still working hat, on yeah. hats. <laughs> speaking of which. Well, speaking of which, how to watch, how to listen. No. No. Speaking, oh of, speaking of Marine goodness. Warehouse hats, I have there a Marine go. Warehouse aside, Billy Thorpe. And right. once again, man, I'm giving you a free plug here, here we go. of Thorpe Creative, which deals in promotional material, such as hats, such as shirts, mm-hmm. on the Marine Warehouse Center website. Oh, man. Anyone can go. Anyone can go and buy a hat, buy a visor, buy a long sleeve SPF. You're in the business. What would Marine Warehouse Center most likely be selling those long sleeve SPFs for? All right. So I learned the lesson. They don't do change. It's an even number. One. It's not twenty four ninety five. It's twenty five bucks for the hat. Twenty five bucks for the hat. So it's gonna be thirty two dollars even for the shirt. They'll take that thirty two, and put two of it in their pocket and put thirty bucks in the register. Look at there. Because thirty bucks is the price. It should be worth thirty two. I mean, it is worth thirty two. They're giving people a deal. Let's, so so if you go buy it for thirty, you're Emmett. getting a deal. Emmett, man, you're giving money away. <laughs> hey, man, how many shirts have you sold <laughs> times <laughs> two? That's how much money you lost. <laughs> now. Now, Billy. Oh, man. Now we're going to talk about how to watch, how to listen. Uh, we are on Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, and also on YouTube. And be sure to like and subscribe. Gary, are you subscribed to our channel? <laughs> of course you are. And you own the channel. You're subscribed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can subscribe to your own channel. but <laughs> I subscribed 10 times. <laughs> What's subscribe mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, so yeah, be sure to like and subscribe and comment on those um, on those videos. It really helps the algorithm, and and, and YouTube likes that. So uh, be sure to do that. And yeah, Gary, what else we got here? A fish photo. A fish photo. Fish photo. Look at this. Jason Anderson of Charlotte, North Carolina, land this 26 and a half inch, six and a half pound red drum uh, while fishing the shore in New River Inlet. The fish was caught on a cut mullet. Good looking fish. Good, Good looking, looking fish, but I, Brian's going to talk to us about much, <coughs> much bigger fish. About that fish's grandfather and grandmother. Which is probably like 70 years old i don't know those things are pretty old the huh? big fish <laughs> i'm excited man it's gonna be good billy i want to remind you as i do every episode that when i'm finished talking with brian and he drops some knowledge on us about citation red drum fishing from the surf then i'm going to come to you at the end and say billy in your opinion what was the best takeaway from that All information right. i'm ready the best takeaway but right now i'm going to brian lester Brian Lester, thank you so much for being a guest on our podcast. I am truly excited to talk to you about this topic. And this is Brian Lester again of Hatteras Style Custom Rods and Tackle based right in the heart of everything surf fishing East Coast, Buxton, North Carolina. Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How are you? Man, we're doing Glad good. So our episode is titled Citation Red Drum Surf Fishing in the Fall. A lot of words. I should have probably found a better way to say that, but I think it accurately reflects where we're headed. And before we talk about when, where, bait, and rigs, I like to start with the question to you, Mr. Lester. Why should we listen to what you have to say about surf fishing and or red drum? Why should we stay tuned? Well, guys, there's a, a right way and a wrong way. If you catch fish, you catch fish. If you don't, you don't. Yeah, and it's just something that we've done. It's been bred into us, I do believe, and, and it's it's it, it, it takes skill to get them. I mean, there, there's, there's just, there's no other way around it. it, it it's, the, it, it takes skill to catch these fish. Man, well, I'm. We catch, go ahead. We catch. I mean, you know, it, it's an average year is anywhere between forty and fifty citations per season from January one to January one. Is what we catch. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I know you're in the heart of it, man. I'm When I feel it when I'm in Buxton. So before we get to it, I, I warned you, we have this feature, two questions, non-fishing related questions. And I, I ha these days I apologize in advance for my lack of creativity. So I took Big Red Drum and I said, man, what kind of play can I make off a of Big Red Drum to come off with non-fishing related questions? Big Red Cola. Big Red Cola is a soft drink originating in what state? North Carolina. <laughs> no, it's not, but that's a good guess. <laughs> I, I didn't know it either. I mean, again, I got on Google. I was lazy. Texas. Texas is the home <laughs> of Big Red <laughs> Cola. Apparently, it's pretty, pretty popular down there. All right, uh, I got another Big Red question. This one maybe you have a better shot at. Right. What is the name of the famous Big Red Dog in cartoons? Uh, hold on. I, we got all. Yeah, you nailed it. You got it. One for two. Send him a prize, Billy. Sip it out a prize to Brian. I can't. I can't lie. I was cheap. My wife was in the background. <laughs> That's all right. Send the wife the prize. The wife gets the prize for Clifford the Big Red Dog. Well, all right. Enough. We're going right to the material. People are eager. So first, let's talk about when. You know, if if people watching this, their goal is to try to catch a big red drum from the surf. And I know the conversation is going to be specifically around Hatteras. Maybe they try to employ, you know, some of this where they are, but for you and I, we're talking about Hatteras. Give me a little dialogue on wh when is my, when do my chances start? When do my chances get good? When do my chances start to end? Um, in, in, in all honesty, it varies on wind direction and water temperature. I mean, that, 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 you know, there, there's been a few drum here lately on and off at some of our inlets, you know, and that's, it's not unheard of, but I mean, it's all about water temperature and wind direction. So, I mean, October is kind of the start of it. They'll start plugging around in October and then, you know, later October, I mean, it, it's, it seems to get better and better through the month of, you know, mid October into November, all the way up into Thanksgiving, man, it seems to be, that that's the time man for the fall and, and that you know early december we've called them all the way up till almost christmas and, and you know your spring's the same thing it, it's march 
you know, getting into April and first part of May. And, and it again, it all depends on the water temperature. I mean, you shoot for that 60 degree mark in the water, you know, and, and, and if you're here in Buxton, hope for a southwest wind, man, to shove them up on the shoals and, and you know, kind of pins that bait up on the on the shoals out there on the point. And, and it's on, man. You know, it, it, it's that's it's there's a lot that that play into these drum and and it's all about water conditions um you know water temps current directions and and wind directions so and i mean that's all right so 60 degree water temperature so we're wanting it in the fall to drop to 60 and we're wanting in the spring to get up to 60 yeah that's kind of the happy medium 60 degrees seems to be you know where we've caught most of our fish i mean we've caught them in the 50s um but 60 62 65 degrees it, it seems to you know just really uh, uh kind of get those fish motivated to start eating man so are they moving through are they moving by your coast are they following bait is it the bait that likes that temperature too what do you attribute yeah. that temp to well, uh, mullet run starts in the fall. You know, the mullets start running the beach, man, and they're coming out of the sound. And then you have the, uh, you know, all these big red drum are just, they're stacked up in the sound right now. There is a few offshore fish and whatnot, but, you know, most of them start coming out of the sound. And once they start coming out of the Pamlico sound, man, and in, in the fall, and they're just, they're rounding the shoals and, 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 and the point Buxton points, not the only place you can catch the fish. I, I you know, I, I think it's more populated by word of mouth than any other place on the Island, but that's not the only place you can catch the drum. I mean, we've caught drum in Avon on the, on the stretch in Avon. We've caught them, you know, down towards Hatteras, but you know, it's, it's, it's water temperature, man. There's this great app and, and great site. It's called Rutgers. And, uh, you know, it's on our website under, I can't remember what it's even under, man. It's, uh, anyway, it, it's on our website. We have it. It's Rutgers Fishery, and it gives you the water temps. And, you know, guys that want to come down for a weekend and just give it a shot, best thing to do is get on there, look at the water temperatures off of Buxton Point, off of the sea buoy. And if, if you see that warm, or, or that cooler water this time of year where it starts cooling down and it's going to come into the 60s and you get a southwest wind and you see that water flow and that current, that Labrador current coming, you know, eh, coming out of the west, shoving to the east, you know, that that's uh, that's when you know, uh-oh, there might be some drum. But, I mean, essentially when that mullet run starts in the ocean along the shore and along the beaches in Hatteras is when – you know, you start looking for your drone, signs of your drone. And uh, the mullet have come out of the sound, and then they're, they, they're just in the ocean thick. So these are the these are the drone that people are catching in the Pamlico and in the noose, and they're coming out into the ocean. They're following the mullet. Are they just on the move anyway? I, I wish I knew more. I mean, I would love some insight into this. Are, you know, where, where else are they headed? Well, come all right, from – you know, there's still, I think there's still a lot of uncertainty about where, what the drum do. I mean, we, we've tagged several of them, and don't get me wrong, we have what they call a resident fish. So you have a local fish. Okay, he might get in the sound and live right outside of Buxton and school in the sound, and, and then they come out and, you know, they bite on the point, and they go back in the sound. But there is, in my opinion, a migration pattern. So like in the spring, we catch these big drums all over the point and up through Avon, you know, down towards Hatteras every now and then, Ocracoke. But what these drum, in my opinion, are doing, a lot of them are coming out of the sound, but they're migrating to the bay because it's, we'll catch drum here one after another. And then you'll see the big schools of drum just migrating north. And then, you know, come three to four or five weeks later, the drum have showed up in Chesapeake Bay, and I do believe that's the, the offshore fish, you know, that have been sitting all winter are coming from offshore, inshore, and they make their migration. I don't know how many migrate from further south because I know their drum down there are nowhere near the size and the class drum we have here. But, I mean, these could be an offshore fish. They, they find warmer water in the winter, and they come to the beach in the spring and they migrate north. 
And then they start getting them in the bay. And I just had reports this morning that, man, guys are catching some beautiful drum in Chesapeake Bay. And I got another report from a good friend of mine that's down in Cedar Island. They caught 23 drum last night, you know, in Cedar Island. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, in, they're in the Pamlico. So that's Pamlico sound fish, you know, and, and there is a migration somewhere along the lines. It's just, I don't think it's been figured out by the biologists, in my opinion. Okay. Well, how about a little bit about if we transition over to where, like, you know, I like that we're already started this, that, you know, you can tell me what it is special about the point other than word of mouth that people tend to go there and have success. But then tell me, you know, not, you can name some names about up and down the beach strand, but what it is about certain parts of the beach that might be better, you know, for targeting the red drum, for holding the red drum, for hooking a red drum. Yeah. And well, the point, you know, the point's the point. It's, it's, it's great. I mean, you've got the Labrador, you've got the Gulf that meet right there off of Diamond Shoals, and it just, you know, that's the hot spot. I mean, it, we catch a lot of drum off of the point. Um, but, you know, any given day that, that the point, and we've done it where the point, and you've been out there, you know how just packed it gets. And it's great. I love to see people catching these big fish. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it, it's making memories for these people. It's something they'll never forget. But there's also, you know, the locals down here when, you know, we, we'll kind of follow the bait and, and there's really no designated place. I mean, to catch drum, we've caught a lot of drum in what we call the hook, you know, the in between ramp 44 and down to ramp 48 into that hook right there. When it's open to where we can get in there, we've caught a lot of drum. But essentially, I mean, that's where that's where there's more drum caught on, on Cape Point than anywhere else on the island, to my knowledge. You know, that we do. We fish there hard. We fish there a lot. But, I mean, it's no rhyme or reason they're, they're any place more than the other. They do congregate on the point, and, you know, in my opinion, and then, you know, some of the guys that hardcore drum fish with us, man, we, you know, it's the way the point has been set up previous years to where that, that wind comes in and it stacks that bait up and it kind of traps it on that shoal, you know, and the bait gets kind of pinned up right there. So the drum come where the bait is. And I do believe that has a lot to do with it, you know, and, and we do. We've caught drum um, in in the fall up in Avon. You know, we've been off the beach right there in Avon. You know, we'll get out and ride the beach and kind of look for a, I want to say, you you know, the rip currents, the out sucks, and, and it, maybe it forms a little point. And, it, and the only thing you can do is just try. We'd ride the beach and find one, man, and get out there and just start throwing lead and eight and bait, man. And, and we've caught drum many times just doing that, riding the beach, scouting around, looking for different shoals, looking for points, looking for good good signs. And once you learn to read the beach, man, it's a game changer. So – to go on with uh, conditions now, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to stay up. So with wind direction, and now I'm just talking about general, because, again, people will be watching this and not everyone can get out to Hatteras. I hope they do. I hope this motivates people to make that trip or maybe they're already planning to. But am, am I looking for wind blowing on the beach? Is that ideal? And, you know, I've heard nasty conditions are great. You know, we want it sloppy out there. Tell me a little bit about what you look for. You know, time of day, current, tide. What do you got for me? Well, it is, you know, the current directions, um, you know, it, it, it's, man, there's so many different things to look at. And wind direction is one. That, that southwest wind, man, in the fall, it's great. It's great, you know, out on that point. And, and you get the current. And here's the whole name of the game. We have caught them. Me and a few guys have been out there before and caught these drum on a, light northeast wind and they'd be like holy cow we didn't know they were going to bite well essentially what we all look for is a you know the water temps the the southwest wind the current conditions right so you know if it's blowing hard northeast out on cape point and the current's running out of the east and pushing to the west down into the bite that's not that's not ideal conditions. You know, I, I'll be honest, man. I'll look at it. I'll test the waters. I'm not there 20 minutes before I'm packed up and I'm leaving. You know, what you look for is that southwest wind, that Labrador current that's coming out of the west, pushing out to the east. And always keep the wind in your face. 
I know a lot of people that have been fishing here for years. I just can't seem to catch a big drum. I can't catch a big drum. Well, 90% of the people that don't know how to do this, they come down and they want the wind at their back. And essentially, that's not what you want. You want the wind in your face. If that wind's in your face, it's pushing the bait to the beach. You know, I mean, that's, that's you know, and, and the fish are going to the buffet just like anybody else going to a restaurant. You're not going to keep the buffet at your back when you're serving yourself. You know, that's how it goes. And keep the wind in your face. And, and that's the conditions you want is, man, we fished out there. Um, you remember that storm that come through, what was it, two years ago? I want to say it was Maria. Man, I'm not good with storm names. Okay, well, it came through and it's blowing. I mean, we've got 50-mile-an-hour wind gusts out there, and me and a, a handful of guys are on the point catching drum one after another. One after another, nobody's there. And, and that's, I mean, it is the nastier at times, the better. It really is. And, you know, uh, people are going to laugh at this when I say it, but somebody that knows what to look for when they're catching drum, I've got several good friends. One runs another tackle shop down here in, in Hatteras Village. And, you know, people say, oh, no, you're crazy. But you can see the drum on top of the water feed certain time of years, may, mainly spring. And you can smell a school of red drum. You can smell them. If you've got a wind blowing into your face and they're on top, you know, boiling and eating bait on top of the water, you can smell the red drum. You know, and that's all signs you've got to look for when you're out there. A big school of red drum, you can smell them for sure, and it's almost like a musty watermelon smell. <laughs> all right. Musty watermelon. Man, I'm telling you, people think you're crazy, but, I mean, when you get out there, when you when you got 40 or 50 hardcore drum fishermen out there, and all of a sudden everybody's standing and we're all talking, and then someone gets a whiff of a drum, and you're like, oh, no, I smell it. And then you got 30, 40, 50 guys go to the water at the same time and throw bait and catch drum. It, man, it, 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 I didn't believe it for the longest time, and I am a true believer of that now. Well, tell me about what I want, what stick I want to have in my hand. Tell me about, you know, what rods, you know, what surf rods are going to work best to set me up for success. Um, well, it, it's, all depends, man. And, you know, there's there's all of us guys now are throwing anywhere from a 12 to a 13 foot rod. Um, you know, we throw the CTS, we throw the, the rod geeks, we throw the we came out with the Hellfire rod. Uh, um, you know, there's several, several, several different options. You know, you want a rod that'll sling eight and bait. That's what you want. You don't want to get on a point in the middle of guys drum fishing and throw five ounces and put it in a sand spike. That's not how that works. You get out there, you want to catch a drum, you know, with the current conditions. I mean, yes, I have thrown six ounces when it's a light current, but 99.9% .9 of the time it's eight and bait. That's what we're throwing. You want a rod that, you know, a CTS 1305, that's a, a six to 10 ounce rod. Great beach rod, great beach rod. Then you have a 1306 um, CTS and that's an 8 to 14 ounce. That's the rod of my choice. You know, I, I throw a little bit heavier weight from time to time. But, I mean, you know, you want a rod. And they make plenty of production rods. You know, Penn makes a, uh, several production rods that that we sell, you know, quite a few of. That, that you know, guys want to go out and don't want to spend the four, five, six hundred dollars $600 in a custom stick. You know, that's what they do. They buy a production rod and they do great. So uh, something that'll handle eight and bait, man, that's the ticket, 12 to 13 foot. And then the reel I'm putting on there, I'm, again, there's plenty of options, but what are the characteristics you're looking for to set up um, yourself up for success? Kind of a smooth reel. I don't throw a lot of spinning. Um, you know, it's to each his own. Um, we sell a lot. I've got good friends that throw spinning reels. Um, I'm more of a conventional guy. I throw the pin fathom 12 is the reel I throw. Um, they've never let me down. They're great reels. Um, I did th just this past year start throwing the new, it's called an Akios F15, which is, hey, man, it's, it, 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 you know, I wasn't a big Akios guy. I, I got that reel. I caught a lot of fish on it this past spring, and it, it turned out to be a really durable, good reel. But, I mean, conventional reel is what we throw. Um, you get a little more distance. I, I, I just, that's what I'm used to, and, and it's, plenty of but when you're looking for that reel 
You want a reel that's got a, a decent drag system. It's smooth. Whether it be a mag reel or have the centrifugal brakes like the, the, the first generation pin phallum. Um, but, you know, you don't want to come out of the box with a, uh, you, you don't take it the wrong way. But, uh, 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 you know, we have a lot of guys that come in with the Abu Garcia level wine reels. I'm going drum fishing. That's not ideal. That's not what you want. You know, that that's just, and we try to educate the people that come down here. And this is what we're using. And, and, and we have an awesome time doing it. But, you know, look for a durable reel, you know, uh, pin fathom, man, hands down. That's just me. That That is that is an awesome all-around reel. Me and all three of my boys throw pin fathoms, and we abuse them. You know, we abuse them. So, so that, that's. Bottom line, convention. So other than what you're used to, convention will give you more distance? Yeah, the conventional reel, man, it's smoother on the cast. It gives you more distance. It's not, you know, it'll out throw spinning reel all day long. You know, spinning reel's great. Um, but that conventional, man, that, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you're used to it, it's just like riding a bike. You know, it, it, you got it. So, and that's, to me, that that's what you want out there, man, fishing. And nothing against spinning by any means. You know, I, I've got a big spinning rod, a CTS here that I, I enjoy throwing every now and then. But that conventional reel is just, you can't get no better. I mean, that that's, that's if you're going to get out here and you really want to get into the drum fishing, the conventional reel is the way to go. And if I'm gearing up for big red drum fishing, what am I spooling either the spinner or the conventional with? Um, you know, my line of choice is I use a, a Berkeley Prospect Chrome 20 pound, you know, it, it's, you, and that's another thing online. You know, there's several different lines A suffix makes a good line suffix Tritanium 17 suffix Tritanium 20, but my go-to line and me and 95% uh, of the guys that do this every season day in and day out are filming the either the 16 prospect chrome or the 20 prospect berkeley prospect chrome what is it about that, that line what's that what is it about that line that 95 percent would gravitate to it just holds up man you know you know you don't have to it takes abrasion really well it doesn't chafe up real bad you know we get out on that beach and it's not the type of line to where you know back you know four or five years ago six years ago you catch one or two drum and you got a bunch of chafing on line. Oh, you got to re-spool your reel in the middle of a drum bike. So you're peeling line, you're re-spooling, you're trying to get back out there on the bike. This Berkeley Prospect Groom, man, is is hands down. That's why we use the 20. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a true diameter. It's a .45 diameter line, which is a true 20-pound line, and it takes abrasion great. When you're out there and that thing's dragging, the current's moving, the, the line's dragging through the sand on the shell bottom you're not have to you don't have to worry about you know chafing up or brazing you, you don't have to worry about that you know you just get out there you catch fish and we can catch numerous fish on this line before it's time to change it out you know so that's that's just man it's been it's proven to work put it that way that it, it over all lines that has been proven to be one the, the best out there on the market right now all right, moving to the rig, but before we get to the rig is the leader. Talk to me about how I want to arm my leader, how I want to tie my leader so that I'm ready. Um, uh, you, you, are you referring to tying, you know, rig tying or, or you know. What happens I, after I, the mono? Oh, well, the mono, you go straight into a, if, if I'm running 20 prospect, I'm going to a 50-pound Berkeley trialing shock leader which is about 20 foot of it you know that that absorbs the shock because i mean you can't throw eight ounces on 20 pound mono you'll break it um so you you know we tie in a 50 pound shock leader and then we you know we run our 50 pound shock down to our our slides and in our our hook man it, it's you know there's been a for years i mean just just yesterday you know, on some of these social media pages, everybody asks about drum rigs this time of year. And there's so much controversy over how to rig it and how not to rig it. And, and man, it, it's the way we rig it down here is you got your 50 shot coming off of your main line. Okay, you run down. You've got, they call it a sinker slide, which we use 
you know, regular barrel snap swivels is what we use as our slide. And then we, so we've got shock leader, run down, you got your bead. You know, your bead goes on first. And that's where the controversy is. The bead, the only purpose of that bead on that line is to pre prevent your sinker and your slide from running over top of your shock leader, if you follow me, your shock knot. Right. Okay. You hear guys all the time, oh, no, it's not. It's supposed to go in between the slide and the hook to protect the knot. That, that's a myth. That is a myth 100%. That bead does nothing but keep that sinker from riding up your line and tangling somebody else or riding into the tip of your rod during fighting a fish. That's all that's for. So shot 50 pound shot. You got your bead. You've got your sinker slide. You got you know, that hook to your sinker and you've got your hook. That's it. I mean, and, and when we tie our hooks, we snail all of our hooks, a little one inch leader tied back into a, a, a swivel and we, that we tie that directly to our, sh our shock leader. You got a specific so, hook you like to? Um, yeah, there's several. I, w I was using a lot of the, the Gamagatsu Big Cat 10 aught circle hooks, but we've kind of switched up, man. Um, there's a guy that we've been dealing with a little bit. Um, most of us guys out there drum fishing, he's out of um, Tennessee, and it's called Backstabber Hooks, and he makes, hands down, one of the best circle hooks I've ever used in my entire life. And, um, you know, that, that's what we're using now. And it's, it's backstabber, um, hooks, man. And, and hands down the, the absolute best hook I've ever used. It's he's, he's, they're great, great, great hooks. Um, now talk to me about bait. So I'm, I'm rigged up. I'm feeling confident. What am I, what am I taking out there with me? Um, uh, in the fall, I, I would be focusing my attention on, you know, what they call the cob mullet, a corn cob mullet, which is not a big mullet. It's not a finger mullet. He's just right in between, you know, an eight to, to nine inch mullet, man. The, the, the cob mullets, um, you know, not saying the big ones don't work. They are. The drum can be very picky at times. I mean, it's ridiculous, but they can, um, you know, but that time of year in the fall, you know, the mullets in the water, that's what them drum are feeding on is mullets. So why not feed them what they're, what they're wanting? And that, that's, that's kind of the, you know, fall man is mullet, mullet, mullet. That's what we use. And we do, we use a lot of tuna belly as well. I know you've heard all about the tuna belly. Um, and, and you know, tuna belly is a very good bait, stays on the hook well, very oily. And we catch a lot of fish on tuna belly. Um, to go back to the, cob mullet am i putting the whole mullet on am i hooking it through the eyes like help me out you know let, make sure i got every chance for success yeah what you're doing is you're staking it. so you're not filleting you're not scaling you know you cut the you're cutting the head right behind the gills um that's about my favorite piece of bait on the mullet is you know cut that head off you're hooking right through the lips and and on any of this when you're cutting your bait you know so say a, a eight inch mullet Okay, I'm going to get eight pieces of bait. I'm going to get between six and eight pieces of bait out of that mullet is what I'm going to get. So you're just, you're staking in what you're doing. So you cut the head off, go back an inch, cut it, go back an inch, cut it, go back an inch, cut it. And, and when you're hooking this bait, don't deep meat hook it. You know, expose your hook. You know, just we skin hook or just barely hook this mullet, man, and, you know, that way it increases the best, you know, hook set you can get so he's got that full hook and you don't you know you're not pulling hooks and you're not breaking off i mean it, essentially that's it man just stake it up and, and and send it and so send it man it, how important is distance on the cast i mean if i'm out there and it's anything like shoulder to shoulder is it going to be a game of getting it out there the furthest or it, it doesn't have to be that simple um you know Here's what I tell people that ask that all the time. You know, we get out there. Yeah, we, de we, we, we cast, you know, we're pretty hard casters, me and the guys I fish with. But here's the deal. 90% of the game is being in the water. Yes, at, at times, distance does have a lot to do with it. 
but and at times distance doesn't have anything to do with it when they're there they're there i mean we've caught drum on 30 yard cast we've caught drum on a 100 yard cast so you know for an example here you go last fall um i'll never forget it we're out on the point and some guys you know they were out there and older gentlemen i'm gonna say they were probably 70s man and I'm sitting there long bombing these things out. And these guys are on the beach running 12, 13 foot rods, something that was probably back in the 60s, you know. And they're out there, man. And they're sitting there throwing out. And these guys catch three drum right in front of my face. And I can't get a bite. So I'm getting worked up. And I mean, I'm just getting worked up big time. And, and, I'm thinking, you know, what am I doing wrong? I'm catching drum every day. What am I doing wrong? So I pay attention to what these guys are doing. And these guys aren't throwing 20 yards off the beach, man, and catching drum one after another. And here I am throwing 80, catching nothing. So it's, man, you never know where they're going to be. Um, how about this, man? I mean, this is all great information, man. This is all, we're using this well. So, even though we can catch them other places, I guess maybe only in my mind I had this fixation on bucks. And, man, if I want to get out there, I'm a little intimidated. I'm intimidated because it's crowded. I'm intimidated because it's the point. Give me some, do, yeah. give me some do's and don'ts, man. Help me get out there. Help me feel confident that I'm going out there and I'm following protocol. What do you see that people do right? What do you see that people do wrong? The worst, number one, worst thing you can do, there's two of them, Okay. You got rule one and rule two. If you're going to come to Cape Point and fish, do not. I mean, listen, it's not a law, so I can't say that. But the worst mistake you could do is to to, to bring a rod out there with braided line. That is a 100% no-no. That braided line wreaks havoc. It, you know, I've seen it too many times where we've hooked big fish and a guy down the beach is using braided line. Our fish swims over his line, and you guess what it does? It cuts it right off. Cuts it, cuts us right off. And the second known of sand spikes, if you're going to be out there in a drum bite, do your part. It's called combat fishing for a reason. You walk the line, walk up current, you throw, you drift back down, you finish your drift. You hadn't caught a fish, reel up, go back up line, throw again. Do not come out there, man. That That is frowned upon huge in the drunk community. Do not bring your sand spike, set it up in the middle of a drunk, bunch of drunk guys and stand back on the beach 30 yards where we're down at the water's edge and our waders and there's some guy sitting in a chair up there with a sand spike in the ground using braided line. That is, that's just kind of a – that's that's frowned upon big time. So that's good information, man. So that's what someone can expect. Like, you're not going to post up. It's not about turf. It's about rotation. So you're going up current, casting, and then everyone's more like on an assembly line. That's it. Man your rod. That's the whole deal. Man your rod. When you're out on that point in drum season, man your rod. So, and yes, there's been occasions where I can't get to where, you know, say you're, you're following a current drift and you roll off into a hole and okay, every time I get to this point, I get a bite. We can't get there. Yeah, well, I cast and cast over 15 people. Absolutely. But I man my rod. I walk down to where I'm not crossed anybody. And so uh, essentially, say me and you go on the point and I throw and I catch a faster grip than you catch. Whether I'm over the next man or under the next man, you walk your rod down the beach. So it's walking the line, man. It's combat fishing. Keep up, man your rod, don't sand spike it, and please, God, don't bring braid out there because, man, that, that's just a mess for everybody. So I think, I've, I think I've hit my questions. I think I've hit my talking points. What have I not asked you? What, what have we not covered about big red drum fishing from the surf that I didn't set you up to answer? That Nothing, man. We've covered it pretty good. I mean, I, I, I think we got it down, you know, and I think what, you know – 90 percent of the people need to realize it it is the point what you just said you hit it right on the head a lot of people don't want to come on the point because it is it can be very intimidating but listen man you know 
come down there, ask questions because man, the local guys and the drum guys out there, they're so willing to help somebody out. You know, it's not, you like you said, it's not about turf. You know, we're just out there to catch fish and anybody that has questions and they're more than welcome to come out there. And, you know, I've taken several people like, Hey, meet me here. Let's go out. You know, and, and it is, it's intimidating, but walk down there, watch or sit in your truck, stand on the beach and watch what everybody's doing. Watch what we're all doing. And then come on down there and fish, man. It, it's, it's easy. I'm going to tell you right now, drum or, you know, people say what they want. Drum or not hard to catch. Right place, right time, right, right conditions. I mean, it's on. So, I mean, they're not hard to catch. So you've hit everything right on the head, man. And, and, and that, that's it. Just they're not hard to catch. All right. So now I'm switching to talk to your shop, man, because, yeah, we want – people are going to want a friendly face. They're going to want, you know, you know, just a little support. So tell me about what you got going on there in Buxton with Hatteras, Custom, Rods, and Tackle. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, we got pushed back a little bit. Our grand opening was supposed to be um, uh, uh, first of March. Well, kind of a soft opening. And then, you know, with all the, the stuff that had happened and – you know, it is what it is. So we, we, we ended up opening up um, uh, kind of full-time mid-April. We had a lot of local support, man. We're very blessed in that aspect. We did. We had local guys pouring in here. We had a great, you know, to, to considering the, the conditions, we had a great spring, you know, with the local community, man. We catered to them, and, and we're just getting it done. We're taking rod, uh, custom rod orders daily, and, and – getting to the point now where inventory is, you know, component wise and, and rod blank wise, it's, it's starting to flow a little better than what it was. So we're starting to get a little more of that in, but I mean, you know, we do it all, man. We, we build rods from, you know, from the, the inshore freshwater guys to the, you know, offshore Canyon guys, swordfish rods. I mean, I'm in the process of building two swordfish rods right now, man. And, and it's, Hey, and trying to juggle the drum rods, but we do it all. We've got, you know, there's nothing in this shop we don't have to cater to to any kind of fishing you want to do. And you're more than rods. You're a tackle shop, bait shop. Yes, sir. Full blown bait shop. Bait shop. I mean, we 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 get fresh bait daily. And where are you located? Um, right directly across. If you're coming into the town of Buxton, I'm um, going south. I'm I'm, I'm right beside fatty's eatery and across the street from outer banks motel so as soon as you come into buxton on the right hand side well brian i hope i'm out there soon i am hope i'm out there checking out the store yeah this crazy year has kept me from spending my time in outer banks but end of september i'm out there look forward to crossing man thank you for your time brian yeah man thank you guys and it was i enjoyed it well good man i'm glad you did billy how about you man good episode Way good episode, man. Man, I know Learned people are up. curious about it. And again, yeah. when I say that, it's because I'm curious about it. When I say, you know, it's a little intimidating, man, the point is intimidating. But I love the point he made, man. It is a community. And you know what? You don't put on airs and you ask questions and find that people would be more than yeah. willing to help you out. And leave that sand spike at home. And the braid. Dude, that's good to know because I fish with braid inshore. Not there. You're <laughs> not, not going to fish with braid now, are you? <laughs> nope. You're not a dumb guy. Nope. And then, and the, you know, another takeaway, man, it's just the conventional reel. I never even thought about that. I mean, I'm sure that's a huge learning curve to get distance with a conventional reel, but I can't, it takes even, some practice. I can't even cast a bait caster without <laughs> spooling up. So <laughs> I didn't take a lot of practice, but uh, that and then the, um, the mullet like going like hooking it shallow instead of not hooking it deep i right. never even thought of it because you know you, you always think like i want my bait to stay on but that's i guess you want the bait to work if it's given a chance yeah, yeah that's man. good man so good a lot of good takeaways man a lot of good takeaways we'll wrap this up all right well here we go guys if you are watching or listening you know how to do that but if you don't then i'm going to show you this slide one more time because you can watch us on or watch us on youtube and be sure to like subscribe comment it helps the algorithm uh, and if you want to listen you can listen on apple podcast spotify podbean stitcher and google um, podcast as well and we once again really appreciate marine warehouse for being a a sponsor of the uh this episode of this podcast and so be sure to support them if you're in the area and you're looking for any boat stuff accessories but good great episode and be sure to subscribe to 
check out the other ones. Yeah, Billy. That's Man, it, we, lo- we love Marine Warehouse Center. Sales, service, parts. We can't promote them enough. <laughs> Gary's trying to get that boat in the commercial. <laughs> or at least a hat. I need a hat. <laughs> Oh, man. What a good episode, Gary. Appreciate it again, man. Yeah, man. See you next, next time.